Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I'm back with my second spring reading wrap up. There will be a third but it will be on my Patreon because as of next week or possibly the week after we're going to be going back into the monthly, well bi-monthly uh, wrap up, so two every month. So there we are. Um, now let's get cracking and in the last spring reading wrap up that I did, which I'll link down below, I started with my favourite book, well, my favourite non-fiction book so far of the year since January, because I did uh, wrap ups in January. I don't know why I sort of lost the way again. I lost the way last year, but anyway, we found that we're finding the way back slowly but surely. Um, and I'm going to save one of my favourite fiction books that I've read so far this year since January um, until last, just to be a tease. Um, but I've actually enjoyed all of these to different extents. Well, maybe bar one or two actually. But let's start off with two books that are not in my usual wheelhouse of reading. The first of which is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Now I read this as a buddy read with the wonderful Becca of Becca and the Books, who I think has the best nails in booktube and every so often I have the real urge to get nails like hers just for a weekend or so I'd just love to try it anyway um, she had um, got her patrons I think to vote for a book that they should make her read I think as a punishment for she does this amazing um, Becca's Bookopoly which is where she cre recreates Monopoly board uh, and it's got a bookish delight I'll link her channel down below so you can go find it more anyway huge tangent <laughs> I will link Becca's channel below so that you can find out more but this is the book that um, she had to read and I'd wanted to read it for ages and so I was like shall we do a buddy read and so we have um, I actually met Becca in real life last year during the pandemic when we filmed a video for YouTube's booktube which I'll link down below too anyway um, this I feel like has been across all of YouTube, so I don't need to explain too much about it, but it's about basically um, a prince in Britain who, um, well, actually, no, it's about the president's son in America, female president, brilliant, um, and uh, who falls in love with a prince in England and their relationship, which sort of starts off as frenemies because of an incident that means they have to be friends to kind of make... Uh, what's the word I want to use, um, the relations between Britain and America good again after what could have been really fractious um, and then obviously this r romance starts. I don't read romance often, I really enjoyed this, I didn't love it, it isn't like the best thing I've read all year, however I'm reading um, another romance book with Rebecca right now as I film, well not obviously while I film this because I'm sat here talking to you, but um, I am really loving that and it's the first of a series of three. I'll be talking about it in my first May wrap up, but yeah, really, really enjoying that. Um, but I did, this was, what I loved about reading this was that it was so not what I normally read, but it was pure escapism. It was really enjoyable. I think it was possibly a little bit longer than it needed to be. Um, it was full of snark and steam and shenanigans. And yeah, I was uh, pleasantly surprised by it. And um, like I said, me and Becca have sort of started this unofficial romance buddy reading going on. And I'm really, really enjoying sort of dabbling in romance as it were. So um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was much steamier than I expected, which I also kind of enjoyed. So there we go. There's my thoughts on that. Uh, let me know if you read it and uh, tell me what your thoughts are on it. And um, then, I feel a bit rusty, I haven't filmed properly for a while. Um, next was a book that I read for a live that I did with the author and my mother, which I'll link down below. The author was Jess Kidd and this is Everyday Magic. And this book instantly makes me smile. I absolutely loved it. It's about Alfie Blackstack who um, is orphaned and goes to live with his aunts who he didn't know but are witches and so he goes to live with them and from there a mystery ensues that involves um, more witches and befriending a local circus and just so much delight and what I loved about this firstly was that Jess Kidd, I've loved her books for adults um, and the sense of humour is definitely still in here which is one of the things I like. I don't generally tend to like funny books but I do think Jess Kidd is really funny in her writing and I really enjoy it um, and that's here too. Not once did I feel like she would be patronising a young reader. There are also some really nice jokes that will apply on levels to 
a kid reading it, but if an adult is reading this to a child, they'll get an extra joke out of it, which I thought was really savvy. Her characters are fantastic. The way she plays with the language is brilliant. And the thing that I also really, really loved about it was that it really took me back to the books that I loved as a kid. This felt very kind of worse witch Mildred Hubble. I have a cat called Mildred. That is who she is named after. Um, and so, yeah, I just absolutely love this. If you've got any youngsters in your life, I would highly recommend getting them this and also just getting it for yourself as a real treat to curl up with because it's a swift, speedy read and is just very funny, very enjoyable, just delightful. That's all I can say. Then onto something very different, um, but back to more, I suppose, my wheelhouse of literary fiction. Um, I did a video where I um, matched books that I read to the glasses that I was wearing. I'll link that down below. And one pair I matched with Memorial. And actually I got people to vote for it. And this was voted for by my patrons as a book out of um, four different mint covered books. I'm actually wearing mint today, unintentionally, um, that I should read. Now I was a bit nervous about reading this because I um, didn't love Lot as much as everybody else did. I liked it, but I think because what everyone was saying was about it, I was expecting to absolutely love it. But I did really, really, really like this book. Sorry, Chris was singing in the bath, so uh, I had to stop this. Anyway, I don't know if you heard any of that treat. Um, but um, this, yeah, this is about a couple called uh, Benson and Mike. Uh, they've been together for a while and they're still having sex, but the relationship is kind of petered out. Actually, when we get because the book is set into different narratives from each of them and different perspectives. Um, but slowly things are revealed that show that the relationship isn't healthy in other ways. Um, and I, I won't spoil it for anyone else. But um, yeah, anyway, um, Mike's father is dying. So he's going to go back to Osaka to see his father. But at the same time, his mother is coming over and he leaves her with Benson, who they don't have the greatest relationship. And we then follow what happens after that. Um, I thought this was really, um, whilst I found, you know what I'm like with books that have got too many coincidences, I, the whole idea of one parent dying and the other one just arriving, that initially I was a bit like, that feels like a bit of a stretch. But once I got into it, um, I thought it was just so brilliantly done, the way it looks at different cultures, the way it looks at sexuality, the way it looks at race, um, the way that it looks at, well, with cultures like how they um, clash, how they combine, all the things that I really love that I mention all the time on this channel because I do really, really enjoy that. I love that in this. I also just thought it was very realistic um, and I thought the way it looked at the relationship, regardless of the fact they were two men, just the flaws and the um, difficulties and the miscommunications and all those kind of things, I thought this was really, really, really good. So I would recommend very much indeed and I'm looking forward to whatever Brian Washington writes next. Then, in that same video, I read uh, Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers before I knew that it was going to be on the Women's Prize long list. And um, I really loved this book until the end. <laughs> so this is a really interesting look at the whole, um, I don't want to say spinster, but it kind of is. And I mean, my mum talked about this because it was on the long list and we read it together. The way it looked at what people's um, sort of perceptions and projections on spinsters were post-war in the 1950s this book kind of defies and I love it for that so the spinster in question is Jean who is working for a newspaper where she's kind of ignored and she just has gets to write like little tidbits here and there which actually are put throughout the book which I really really enjoyed um however that is until a woman called Gretchen has supposedly had a virgin birth and she and Jean then goes to find out more about this and write a whole story about it and see could this possibly be true um and I loved the way that this incident and this story brings these two women together and also Gretchen's daughter of the virgin birth and also her husband who is not the father and then does something, uh, it takes it just in a slightly dark and slightly sinister yet also weirdly delightful way as this sort of odd friendship relationship thing blooms because of the fact that initially it's all about working, getting the story, and then other things come to the fore. Now, I mentioned that I wasn't a fan of the ending, and I was gutted by that, because up to that point, I genuinely thought this was going to be one of my favourite books of the year. And then 
I can't spoil it, but suffice to say, I just think it went too far. It's a shame, and I hate doing that on a public forum because you never want to, you know, people have put so much effort into writing these books, and there was so much I loved about it, but I'm always going to be honest with you about my thoughts on books. So, um, yeah, that is my thought on this. Now, also on the Women's Prize long list, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to mention any of the books that are on the shortlist because me and my mum are going to be doing our video where we reveal to each other and film it so that you can all see it, um, our list of the shortlist in our personal preference up to our favourites. And so I don't want to give anything away here because mum sometimes does watch this channel. Um, but the I'm going to mention this one and then the other eight I will talk about in that other um, spring reading wrap up that I'm going to do for Patreon. But um, Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. Sadly for me, this was just not my kind of book, which is odd. Right, let me rephrase this. I thought this book was going to be Savage Catnip. It's a difficult mother and daughter relationship, which I find fascinating. And um, it is about, in part, um, dementia, which I find well, it's a subject that's very close to my heart because my great uncle had that, who I adored. Um, it's set in India, which I am fascinated by and would like to know much more about, although obviously at the moment, oh, such an awful situation in India. Anyway, um, so in my head, this was going to be a perfect Simon book and I really didn't like it very much. I think the problem for me was, and but that said, I didn't like it, but I can totally see why other people would really, really, really like it. But I found it so cold and clinical that I just couldn't, I don't need to like characters. I don't need to want to be best friends with the character. I often like an unlikable character that can be something quite um, therapeutic and uh, sort of darkly delicious, I guess, in not liking a character. I mean, I don't know if you've seen uh, the film I Care A Lot, um, but I love that film because they're all awful and yet you're sort of rooting for some of the less, or even sometimes you're rooting for the most awful people. Anyway, so if I say I don't mind characters that I don't like, but I just didn't get any depth with them. I didn't connect with them in any way. Um, I didn't really care, um, which is ironic, just talking about I Care A Lot. But um, yeah, it just, sadly was not for me and I'll be interested to see what Avni Doshi writes next and, I, and to be fair it could have been the fact that I was reading it quite quickly because whenever me and mum read the longest skill we are reading slightly faster than normal because you know it's a lot of books to read in a short space of time but yeah I didn't I didn't see all the things I no that's not right either I can see why other people would enjoy it with the mother-daughter relationship but for me, it was the coldness and the clinical nature of it that sometimes does work for me, but didn't work for me in this case. I feel like I've over explained that now. Um, right. Then on to some books that I read for Spring Book Hibernation, which is something that me and the lovely Tom of Tom Reads Things have been doing for the last um, almost year, I guess. Um, and I'd been doing before that and we've invited my mum to join in with it. And so we um, pick some prompts and get books off our shelves that match the prompts, but the idea is that the prompts are there for you to join into if you would like to, which we would love you to, and hopefully we'll be doing one in the summer. Um, the group read, because we've now started to do a group read, we wanted to choose something short um, and sharp and potentially sweet, um, because we thought this was going to be a funny book, um, was Cheerful Weather for the Wedding by Julia Stracci, which I have meant to read for ages. I have not read a Persephone book in so long, and like, I made a pact years ago that I was going to read all of them at some point in order, and I haven't got around to it, and I've decided I will read them all, but not in order maybe. Anyway, this is all set on a wedding day where Dolly is um, going to get married. However, she's having slight second thoughts about it. There's another man who she loves who is downstairs waiting to see if she will marry and a mother who is fractious the whole way through. Now, it's quite upstairs, downstairs. It's quite la -di da you know, jolly hockey sticks and all those kind of things and should be the sort of thing that I really, really loved. I enjoyed it, but with caveats in the fact that I found the ending too swift because it's so short and I mean like there's not that much on the page either so it is really really short and um, it didn't full, feel fully formed to me it didn't feel fully fleshed out I didn't feel like I got to know the character's depths I couldn't work out with the twist at the end whether that was true or not um, and I also couldn't really see the tensions between Dolly and her husband-to-be and this potential lover I just didn't get that 
Um, and I also didn't find it very funny. So for me, I sort of enjoyed the rumpy, jolly, holly, hockey sticks nature of it and enjoyed giving it a read, but it wasn't what I was expecting, which could also be unfair on the book because I put those expectations on it, but hey-ho, there you go. Uh, it has, though, got me reading more Persephone's. I have read a Persephone poetry collection since, and uh, once I've finished doing the Desmond Elliott uh, longlist to shortlisting, which is happening on Monday, although we're not announcing the shortlist until June, um, I will hopefully dive into another because I'm going to start reading by whim again, which will be really, really lovely. So there's that one. Then for one of the other prompts, which was a book that is funny, this hadn't been my intention to be the book that was funny, but um, it was um, Trans Visibility Day. And so I decided to read What's the Tea by Juno Dawson, who I adore. Um, and this is um, Juno's kind of no-nonsense guide to all things trans and or non-binary. And the reason that this ended up being funny book is I listened to it on audio and Juno reads it and it is so funny. And it's done in such a brilliant way because it's really frank, really honest, really direct, but with lots of asides that can make some of the trickier parts of it. Like, I always like that anyway in a book where you get kind of the light and shade, the funny and the heartbreaking. Um, I just think that can really add something to a book. That's me sort of doing the motion of the book in emotions. Um, and yeah, I just thought this was fantastic. I, one, I think it's brilliant in effect, in sort of, if you think you are an ally and you think you know stuff, there will be stuff in here that will you might not know. Um, I like to think that I am a really good ally and this showed that there's so much more that I need to learn. And it's also in that vein, a really good jumping off point to go and find more uh, reading and more work that you can do on yourself, but also to benefit others and the trans and non-binary community. But yeah, I thought this was fantastic. I think Juno is just amazing and yeah, can't recommend this enough. This should be in every school library around the country. That's what I've got to say about that. Um, another prompt was um, to read a book with a kind of weather in the title. And I really struggled with this one until I started listening to on audio, Funny Weather, um, Art in an Emergency by Olivia Lang, which is one of those books that has been mentioned by me on this channel on and off pretty much continuously for ages. I, I think, well, I can't even remember how many times I've said, I'm going to read that book, I'm going to read that book, I'm going to read that book, but it's been a lot. I absolutely loved her debut novel, Crudo, when that came out, which um, is a fictional account of everything that happened in 2017, but based on the facts of 2017, which is so bizarre when you read it because you can't quite believe everything that happened really happened. Um, it's very meta. Um, this is a collection of all sorts of different pieces that Olivia Lang has written uh, before. So I'm just going in. Um, you've got things like Artist Lives, where um, she's written essays on different artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat, uh, David Hockney, uh, Georgia O'Keeffe, uh, Derek Jarman, then some of her Freeze columns. And you've also got... Um, that she does this brilliant section about four women where she talks about Hilary Mantel, Sarah Lucas, Sally Smith and Chantal Joff. There's essays about all sorts of things, um, love letters, reading, where she kind of does book reviews. There's a whole gamut of celebrating art and artists in this book. And what I loved actually was, one of the things that I loved most about this book was not hearing about people that I knew, like Hilary Mantel and Alice Smith and Derek Jarman and um, David Hockney. That was brilliant because it kind of added to what I sort of knew or thought. Um, but actually it was fine. This is a book that makes you go off and Google a lot because I ended up reading um, about artists I'd not heard of before, then going up and looking at their work and then kind of exploring it more. And art and in books and me don't normally mix, but this did. I will say that it's something that you need to space out a lot and also you are, like I said, going to have to Google stuff because there aren't pictures in the book and that, you know what I mean? So, and on audio, there certainly weren't. But also, um, sometimes it, I don't know that, sometimes there was something missing occasionally for me and I can't work out what that was. I, I wonder if it might be that I felt like Olivia Lang loved some of these people so much and knew so much about them. She occasionally forgot the reader might not. Um, which is, sounds like a backhand, well, it sounds like critique, but I suppose it is a little bit, but the passion even in those 
moments and essays still made me read on more if that makes sense. So yeah, I would highly recommend this. I bought Melanie a copy because she absolutely loves art um, and I'm going to be interested to see what she makes of it. But um, yeah, I have finally read it. I really, really enjoyed it. With that slight caveat that you are going to have to do some work with it and go off and explore and find out. But that's no bad thing because I've ended up becoming a huge Georgia O'Keeffe fan because of this book. And she's actually, uh, one of her pictures is now uh, my phone screensaver. So there you go. Uh, then... Right, now, there are a couple of books that were um, for the prompts for Spring Book Hibernation um, that also ended up being books that I featured in Frank Magazine. I don't know if I've told you all this, but I'm now the books editor of Frank Magazine, which is very, very exciting, and is run by Melanie Sykes, who I do my book club with. So what I'm going to do is go to the Frank books in a little bit, including one of my favourite books that I've read very, very, very favourite books that I've read um, this year, fiction-wise. But before I do, I'm going to mention Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. Now, I did not know this was going to be on the long list for the Desmond Elliott Prize um, when I picked it, or when me and Melanie actually both picked it because it was on the Women's Prize long list and we wanted to see a Women's Prize long list book for book club. Um, so I had no idea it was going to be on the long list because the long list for the Desmond Elliott is chosen by a selected group of readers across the UK who create a long list for me and two other judges to basically judge and turn to a shortlist and then a winner. So just putting that out there, um, I thought this was brilliant. Um, interestingly, I didn't put it on my personal shortlist for the um, Women's Prize. However, that's not because I didn't like it. And I was really worried when I did that because I was like, well, people think I might not shortlist for this. Who knows what's going to happen with the shortlist with Desmond Elliott. We haven't had that meeting yet. I don't know what different judges feel about it. I can't say where on the list of 10 books this comes. I can say I really, really, really liked it. So anyway, what's it about now that you've got all of that shenanigans out of the way? Um, this is all about a woman called Ava who moves to Hong Kong to teach English. And while she's there, she meets this man who she becomes friends with, who's a banker, who she sort of ends up in this weird they are they aren't kind of relationship where they're kind of just sort of sleeping together initially but there might be more feelings but then is it convenience because actually there aren't feelings there's that um he goes away at one point uh, for a long while and she meets edith and a relationship forms there that is much more natural for ava and much more um uh, emotional but also therefore a bit more dangerous um, because she might get hurt. And we follow then when, um, what's his name? Julian. I should know that because Julian's an absolute tosspot. Um, but <laughs> he, um, when he comes back, um, it, it shows how this sort of tristy thing around Ava goes forward. And I thought her observations on so much research, and also what I loved actually as well, was that there's loads of little moments that are actually huge moments, but just in the background. So there'll be stuff around um, Hong Kong in terms of people who live in Hong Kong or those who come uh, to Hong Kong from other countries and how like there's one incident where Edith has to sign in to get into the flats but white people don't um, there's stuff around the whole voting system in Hong Kong there's stuff around uh, because Ava's from Ireland a lot of stuff around what it's like to be a woman in Ireland and uh, women's rights in Ireland there's just also this really there's lots of interesting things around the English language there's some fantastic scenes where she is teaching um, these kids and the internal monologue just have me howling. So yeah, I think this is really good. It's interesting. I know this is a very Marmite book, but I love Marmite and I love this. So there we go. Right, on to four of the five books that I um, mentioned in Frank Magazine this month, which I'll link down below if you'd like to go and see the whole issue because there's some fantastic writing in there. Uh, not mine, but like other people's, including, including Tamsin Kaladas, whose memoir I read last year and absolutely loved. She's done a phenomenal piece of writing in there. Anyway, there were four books, um, five books that I picked, one which I had sort of dipped in and out of, and we'll talk about in my spring reading wrap up three. But these four I had, um, because I've only just sort of finished it. These four I'd finished, um, and two of them, as I mentioned, were to do with prompts for spring book hibernation. Wow, this has got really like 
almost I feel like I'm in a spider's web of different ways that I connected books and I'm almost confusing myself so I may well be confusing you and um, but one of the prompts was a book with five letters in five letters five words in the title I've discovered I can't count five words very easily there would either always be four or six five just seemed to escape me but the one that um, I went with was um, The Son of the House by Chiluchi Onyemaluqui Anubia and this starts off with two women in this kind of dank I presumed underground room where they have been um, tied together why is the question and as they start to tell each other their stories and their life stories we find out why um, and we find out how they are from completely polar opposite um, spectrums of society in Nigeria and we also go through quite a lot of time in Nigerian history um, but we also get to see how even though they're polar opposites the fact they're women and how women are treated in Nigeria or were when I think still are treated in Nigeria um, it becomes a commonality but a very very dark sad one that's all I'll say like I said Frank Magazine will be linked down below so you can go and read it there um, the prompt for uh, another prompt sorry I think this is the last prompt for screen book hibernation was a book with yellow on the cover this is uh, Milk Blood Heat by Dantiel W Moniz um, this is a short story collection I thought this and again it was in Frank magazine um, I thought this was phenomenal and there are no duds here this is all thriller no filler and um, they're all stories around um, women in the main in Florida and they all have some very dark subject matter within them so just to warn you in terms of triggers um but I just thought they were so well done and they really what I love about some of my favorite sort of really short stories is when they're very much set in the now and very much set on topics of the now but they also but they will have something that surprises you in a different way it could be a dark surprise it could be a happy surprise quite often these are dark surprises um or but they never twists exactly um they can be very shocking as well in this book um but yeah I just loved it and I cannot wait to see what Dantiel is going to write in the future because I will read everything by her Penultimately, out of those um, books for Frank and penultimately for this video, was um, one of my favourite thriller writers, and that is Erin Kelly, and this is Watch Her Fall, which is set in the ballet world and is a thriller all about, um, well, all based around uh, Swan Lake and the um, the two different personalities of swans within that that are played by one person and how this is the peak of anyone's career if they get that role. Now funnily enough it's another Ava um, at the head of this or, or who's the main protagonist of this novel and uh, she has got that part however somebody is watching from the sidelines and when you've reached the sort of peak of your career what what happens next like people are waiting for your downfall watch her fall um, but also what if someone wants to spur that downfall on a little bit quicker it's so brilliant I would love to be able to talk about this and spoil it silly however I don't want to take away any of the enjoyment for any of you so I shan't so there we go right now I've uh, teased and hinted about this quite enough what is one of my absolute favourite fiction books of the year and um, it is This One Sky Day by Leone Ross and this is set on the um, fictional island of Poppy Show in uh, the Caribbean and it's a place where everybody is born with a little extra something something um, magic basically and so you have people who can make food taste of whatever they want it to or make it taste the most delicious food that you've ever had. You can have people who um, can feel truth and lies. You have people who can um, predict people's deaths. That's another one. There's so many in here that I'm thinking about because what happens with this book that I love is that it starts off with just a few characters but then slowly spirals out so that what you actually get is more of these people's lives and how they intersect with each other some of them don't but a lot of them do but then also how 
this whole island runs with its kind of its history, the politics, the way it was developed, the class, um, how this sort of magic is seen and not seen and how sometimes certain magics will get you further ahead in life and some will push you further. Honestly, it's so brilliant and done. I have to say, it takes a while to get into. This took me a good two or three chapters and I wasn't sure. And then literally I was just hooked by it and thought it was absolutely phenomenal. I feel like I haven't sold it enough, but I feel like I've talked for quite a long time in this video. So I may well do a video on this book all for, all by itself, sorry, all for itself as well, actually. So not sorry at all. Um, all by itself, all for itself, because it's one of those kind of books. And Sarah Women's um, Still Life, I also need to do uh, a separate video on because that's another one of my favourite fiction books of the year so far. But yeah, so with that, and also how beautiful is this edition? I mean, that is ridiculous. Um, so it's known as Poppy Show in uh, the United States, but this is the UK edition. So there we go. I feel a bit rusty with the wrap up. So I'm still a little bit um, reluctant to do them, which is why when I'm halfway through, I sort of start to doubt myself and get all like, oh good, I'm not selling this book well enough, or I'm not describing it quite right, or I'm not selling it. What do I mean? I'm not sort of sharing my thoughts on it quite how I want, and I don't sound as articulate as I'd like, and I haven't gone as in depth as I want, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just letting that go. Um, and I think hopefully with the wrap-ups going forward, they will be better, tighter, because also I will have read them within two weeks of filming it. But at the same time, it's quite nice to have a little bit of a space from books, because as you've seen with some of these, at the time I read them, I was really, really, really like madly excited about them. And after I read them, really, really liked them. But then sometimes books fade, sometimes books grow on you more and more. This is certainly a book that has grown on me more and more since I've read it and the more I've thought about it. And um, yeah, so there we go. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these and I will be back on Sunday with the first of my week, of the, sorry, of the first of the return of my weekly reading vlogs, uh, which will be books set by the sea that I read by the sea when I was on holiday last week. There isn't a vlog for this week, but you won't notice because the next Sunday there'll be a vlog of everything that happens next week and there's a lot going on next week. Um, so um, yeah, that's it. I'm rubbish at rounding these videos off, so I shall just say goodbye. I hope you're all doing as well as can be and uh, let's have a chat in the comments down below. Bye.